that he presented to those who had passed on. Perhaps the most famous of those is the King Follett Discourse, so-called, because it was dedicated to Elder King Follett, who had been killed in an accident during the construction of the Nauvoo Temple. Today, a little bit different, um, I would like to dedicate this Easter broadcast to a dear, dear friend, uh, Robert Finlinson, who passed away just a couple of days ago on April 3rd at the age of 41, leaving a wife and three children, the oldest of whom is a good friend of my youngest son. If we did not have the concept of resurrection, the death of Robert Finlinson is tragic as it was in some ways. And as much as his family will miss him, would have been infinitely worse because there would have been no hope of a resurrection. Without an afterlife and a resurrection, death would indeed be a horrible thing. But because of the hope that we have in a resurrection, it is something that is definitely tempered, although it still gives one pause. One of the things that I did a little bit earlier in the week was be on as a guest on a different radio station where several calls came, one of them particularly hostile and skeptical to the idea of religion, of the existence of God, and of an afterlife. I've sparred on the radio a few times before with this person, with this gentleman, and many others like him. In fact, I have, I believe, heard firsthand and read the best arguments that could be brought to bear against the idea of a resurrection and an afterlife. There are those who have said that it just isn't true. And they come up with various different ideas. Now, I will tell you that after hundreds of hours studying this subject, I have come to the conclusion that the resurrection is real. And I absolutely believe, not just as a matter of faith, but also as a matter of evidence that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not a hoax. It is the most singular, remarkable fact in history. Let me tell you some of the reasons why I say that. Jesus of Nazareth who was a Jewish prophet, who himself claimed to be the Christ, the Messiah, as we read at the beginning of the book of Mark, he stood up in the synagogue, he read the Isaiah scroll talking about the Messiah and said, today this is fulfilled in your ears. He proclaimed himself to be the Messiah. After his earthly ministry, he was arrested, he was judged to be a political criminal, and he was crucified. On the third day after his death, and I say on the third day, many people say it was three days from the time of his crucifixion, it was about a day and a half the way we would count it, but it was on the third day from Friday at about sundown or slightly earlier till Sunday morning. That is the time that he was in the tomb. At the end of that time, he was resurrected. 
and it cannot just be explained away. And I'm going to tell you the reasons why. First of all, the book of Matthew and the book of John were written by witnesses, eyewitnesses to the resurrection. They did not see the resurrection happen, but they saw Christ personally after. They were eyewitnesses to a live Jesus after his crucifixion. The other two books, Mark and Luke, were written by people who interviewed eyewitnesses and who heard the stories from eyewitnesses. In the case of Mark, it was Peter. In the case of Luke, he went around and interviewed all the eyewitnesses that he could find for his book. What about the different ideas that somehow Christ really wasn't resurrected? Well, let's explore some of those and see if any of those hold any water at all. First of all, let's start with the idea that somehow, as some skeptics claim, Jesus mm, didn't really die. He was badly hurt, but he, he didn't really die. Is there any possibility of credence for that? Answer, not one bit. He was crucified by professional Roman soldiers who knew how to check to see if someone was alive or not. They determined that he was dead. Next, what happened was that his body was begged by Joseph of Arimathea. And then, particularly as we read in the Gospel of John, he was readied for burial according to Jewish custom. We use the term burial loosely because it was not in the ground, but it was in a tomb. It was in a tomb with a small opening carved into rock with no other way to get out other than the place where he was inserted into the tomb. One of the most remarkable parts of this whole burial process that is rarely discussed is that the body is wrapped in linen cloth. And in the Gospel of John, this is described in detail. And then, according to the Gospel of John, approximately 90 pounds of aromatic spices mixed together to form a gummy substance was applied, this substance was applied to Jesus' body on the outside of the linen cloth. If somebody had actually been alive up until that point, they would have suffocated. But I assure you, he was dead already. His body was then laying in the tomb. And then an extremely large stone was rolled up against the entrance of the tomb. Typically, the stones that were at the entrance to the tomb that were rolled in the way were rounded. They were kind of like a round disc, and they weighed approximately two tons. It took a lever, quite a strong lever, a long lever, to move one of those when we come back from the break more about Jesus and the resurrection and why it is real. Stay tuned. We return to Religion Today with Martin Tanner on KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Welcome back. I'm Martin Tanner. This is Religion Today. Today is, of course, Easter Sunday or as it was actually called during the time of the early Christians, Resurrection Sunday. The reason for that is because of the remarkable event of Jesus 
resurrection. If you'd like to be in touch with me about this or any other subject, send me an email to martinstanner at gmail.com. I'll be happy to respond. Today, this broadcast is dedicated to the life of Robert Finlinson, who at 41 years of age this week passed away to lung cancer, never smoked a cigarette, lived a model life, had no risk factors, which leads me to believe that there was a special reason for his departure to the next life, although I do not know what that might be. Sadly, he left a widow and three young children. He was a wonderful young man. He was kind. He was generous. He had a marvelous smile and a tremendous imagination and wonderful artistic abilities. I have hope for his resurrection because I believe with all my heart that Jesus was resurrected and it was a genuine thing. It was not made up. It was not something that somehow became a tradition over time. It actually happened. And here are the reasons why. After he had been covered, his body had been covered with all of those spices, those gummy spices, about 90 pounds worth, according to John the Apostle, who was there to see and to know. Something happened. The Roman guards rolled the stone into place and they put a wax seal at the edge where the stone touched the outside of the tomb. If that seal was broken, a Roman soldier could die as well as the person who broke the seal. This was a serious offense. Roman guards, plural, were posted at Jesus' tomb. Roman guards, if they left their posts, were subject to the death penalty. No Roman guard would leave his post on a whim or for no reason. Anybody who attempted to break into the tomb would have been killed or arrested by the Roman guards. The same with anyone who broke the seal. And yet, on the third day, a couple of days after Jesus was crucified, he was seen again alive. Women went to the tomb, and after that, the apostles. What did they see? There was an empty tomb. The seal was broken. The approximately two ton, that would be about 4,000 pounds, of stone had been rolled out of the way. The Roman guards had fled. These guards, who would have been subject to the death penalty for doing that, were so terrified by what they saw, so startled, that they had left the tomb, according to all the accounts. Not only that, Jesus, after he was resurrected, didn't just appear to a few. He was seen, according to the New Testament records, by over 500 people. In the Gospel of John, John the disciple sees the burial clothes covered with all of this pitch and gum, probably caved in, the body of Christ gone. From there, 
many people saw him. The apostles talk about him being seen by over 500. And Paul says these guys are still alive at the time that he wrote his record. In effect, telling the listeners, if you don't believe me, go talk to them. They're around. They're right here. We now have approximately 24,000 fragments of New Testament manuscripts that date from this time period. That is a lot. That is like a bestseller. If this event never happened, you would also have a huge number of writings by these 500 or by others who said, ah, didn't really happen. We do not have things like that. Not from anyone who was close to the record. We have some from skeptics who never saw anything, who were not witnesses, but they do not know. The resurrection of Christ happened. People saw him. Not just people who were positive, as is often stated, or who were his followers, as is often stated. Take as an example of a skeptic, a huge skeptic, Saul of Tarsus, later known as the Apostle Paul. He hated the Christians so much that he was responsible for the imprisonment and death of many of them, including Stephen. It was Paul who was the accuser who held the coats, as was the custom, while Stephen was stoned to death. This was Saul of Tarsus. He did not like the Christians. He thought they were a threat. He hated them. And then he saw Christ on the road to Damascus. It changed his life. He did not like that. It was hard for him because it showed that everything that he had done up until then was wrong. And yet he was willing to change. There are other examples since then of people who have been resurrected. There is, of course, John the Baptist, who restored the Aaronic priesthood to Joseph Smith and to Oliver Cowdery. There are also Peter, James, and John, who restored the Melchizedek priesthood to them. These were resurrected beings. There was, of course, the angel Moroni, who also appeared to Joseph Smith. And then, of course, as a contemporary matter, there is the experience, which we do not have time to read today, but which I have been fascinated with and I have tried to debunk, but found it to be true, the experience of Ezekiel Johnson back in approximately 1909, in which he actually saw a young lady resurrected who had died many years earlier. A resurrection is more than just a resuscitation. It is someone who was dead coming alive again forever. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is real. Because of it, Robert Finlinson's family and the families of all those who have lost loved ones will see them again. I know this to be true. I know this to be true. Join me again next week. I'm Martin Tanner. This is Religion Today on KS.